All right, welcome. Welcome back to the channel, the podcast. If you're on YouTube, nice to see you guys again. This is the Crank Brothers Race Review Series, where myself and a selected few co-hosts will break down each and every World Cup DH race. And oh my goodness, we thought Val de Sol was insane. Well, Ajay has just broke the internet, broke the French sort of crowd records again, even though it was raining. Now, Crank Brothers, they are synonymous with DH racing. Last year, they cel celebrated 13 years in a row with that elite world champs win with that matter dh pedal now they also won the 2023 world cup overall titles both men and women on the pedals and it's not just pedals they are adding to their product offering i think you guys have seen a host of race winners podium containers in their shoes the likes of the exciting ronan dunn lucas shaw he is back on top form camille blanche struggling a little bit with that concussion at the moment troy brosnan back to that podium threat every race and Benoit Coulange didn't have the best race in Leger which we will get to now my co-host this week is Win Masters he joined us previously but I've got him just on his own he's back from Leger Win, man are you dry yet that looked pretty wet <laughs> it was a it was a wet one for sure um I guess I was kind of lucky I didn't make it to the final but um I, I would enjoy those conditions but I didn't have to get too wet so I was under the umbrella watching so uh it was pretty easy for me really but uh didn't look very easy for anyone else needles no it, it certainly didn't i think 10 out of the 33 or is it 10 out of the 40 if you include the woodman it was like the lowest percentage of clean runs i think we've ever witnessed i think worse than shumpery back in the day which you obviously know of but yeah, it wasn't an easy task to get down that hill, even in the dry. Leger is one of the most technically and physically demanding tracks. So I don't think, I think you should pat yourself in the back. You got, got in the quali. Um, but I think racing in those conditions, I don't know. To me, it takes the pressure off sometimes because you haven't even gone near that track in those conditions. So like you said, you would have liked to race because, you know, it's a roll of the dice. Anything could happen. You could end up on the podium, as we saw with some of these guys absolutely incredible rides everyone well deserved but if you look at the time gaps it's pretty fair to say what on earth happened there you know we've got a lot of seconds back to fifth probably yeah probably the we haven't had time gaps like that for a very long time so um yeah we had some big time margins last week in Valdesol with Amri's win but now it's like the time gaps are the whole way through the field so um it's insane <laughs> I didn't think when we chatted about Valdesol, we'd say, okay, we got another record margin compared a to later. a week later that's bigger than Valdesol, but just yeah. not big enough that, um, compared to Aaron Gwynn's. But it's getting closer. I mean, yeah. if the stats ca carry on like this, maybe uh, we're going to see it by the end of the season. But it, it really is the conditions that allow these things to happen, right? Well, sure. Um, when the conditions are like that, you have to just survive pretty much and uh Amory seemed like he he did more than survive he was one of the only ones that was actually riding it properly and um there's probably a lot of factors that weighed into that but he's just on the roll at the moment it's insane yeah you you, you said it well I mean when things click when you have commitment and you have the skill, the talent, the strength, and the confidence. I mean, that's how these winning margins can happen. If you compare that to someone like Loic Bruni, I think it's fair to say that that was a championship ride. He was riding, you know, to protect the overall. He knows anything can happen, and he knows how many points he can lose if he pushes too hard and goes down. But there's no way you can win a race in this day and age with those sort of calm, protected runs. It, it just doesn't happen. It could happen back in the day. You could land on the podium with a really calm, collected run. But there was that one sort of off camber. There's like a rut off camber, and a few guys were jumping. Andy Cole, he didn't really jump, but a few guys did. And I saw Loic, you know, just come over the top, actually even unclipped. It looked like he was just like, I just need to get through this section. And that's not how Loic normally races. No, nah, he was definitely riding to not crash rather than riding to race um he just wanted a clean run i guess and um he he did that really well like if if you said to someone go up to that top of that track and ride down without crashing um 95 percent of people won't be able to do it so he know he knows how to operate 
under pressure and how to deliver a run just for points and, and nothing else really. Like he, he was like salvage all the points he can and do what he can, but not push. And he didn't push at all. You could really see it. Like it's not often you see Lloyd kind of nursing his way down a little bit. Yeah, I wonder how many riders would take the opportunity to go do a run or you offer them like a slow conservative, you won't crash. Maybe you don't tell them at times. It's okay, you won't crash. Or you can go up and you're definitely going to have a better result, but there's a chance you crash. You know, someone like Amri, he, yep. his attitude towards this race, you could hear it. He's like, I just want to have fun. I want to see what it's like. Um, I love these conditions. You know, he's got nothing to lose. He's, you know, he's back in the overall, or he was a lot more behind in the overall. And you could hear it. And, and riding in the wet, as, as you would know, it is about attitude. It is about your strategy. But it's like, are you negative about it? Are you bummed that it's raining? Or are you saying, hey, it is what it is. I, I'm Good. so stoked to go and do a race run in these conditions. Like, not every rider in the start gate is thinking that. There's no way. It's not possible. Nah, probably 80% were already like, oh, shit, what do we do now? And um, for me, those conditions normally are the best because it's such a good opportunity to get a result. Um, you know that a lot of people have already, like, kind of mentally given up a little bit. Like, they're like, oh, shit, how we just got to ride down. But if you have that little bit of negativity, then that kind of plays into your riding and then most likely you crash even if you were riding well like because just because you're thinking you're coming into the race with the wrong mindset and you kind of just have to laugh and get on with it like you're like well let's have fun now really so and then you can kind of get into the right run and and ride loose because you have to ride loose when it's wet like that to be able to keep getting grip everywhere um and you have to stay pretty relaxed rather than try and just push. It definitely wasn't a race to push it out of the start, as we saw with some people's starts. Yeah, and, uh, and and as you said, if you're riding not to crash, that's you're really sort of behind the eight ball mentally. You, you do often ride tighter. We've both done race runs where we probably th- had in the back of the mind a tough section or hesitation we just didn't want to crash or we qualified well right and then you, you don't want to you ride tight you, and, and you could see it in some of the riding styles and and it's easier said than done it's easy for me to sit here and 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 sort of hypothetically say what was going through some of the riders mindsets some of them were committed were riding extremely well and literally track conditions took them out you know mm-hmm. some of them were yep. conservative into the lower woods into that steep stuff that is basically the topic of the game. But maybe like if we reverse it a little bit, you know, how did the week unfold? You had a lot of weather coming in through that region. So you had quite a soft track, um, a lot of roots exposed because now, you know, it's a couple of years into using a lot of the same sections. So practice looked very challenging in the beginning. And then you've got this track that's soft, holes are developing, and then it's getting dry and dry. And that, that becomes... That's why it was so blue groove. That's why it was so slick because you've got these hard, hard ruts and just moisture sitting on top of the most compacted track by the time, say, semifinals looked like optimum conditions. Yeah, it was pretty prime for the semifinals. Um, just the track really developed differently to Leger has done in the past like because of that wet weather prior. Um, and it rained pretty hard at the end of track walk. So the track got quite deep in certain bits. Like some of the ruts were real deep and they're real sharp. So like it was super easy to cross rut. Um, I think at the end of each day, they did have the course maintenance crew go down and like fix a lot of the ruts. So that they were easy. Yeah, pretty much. They were doing a lot of work on the track. Like they had to cut quite a lot of routes and fix a lot of ruts. They do a lot more work than they ever did in the past. Like I remember back, when we and then our heyday needles. Um, <laughs> you still in your yeah. heyday? I'm past the <laughs> heyday, but thanks. Um, we were just we just ride the same track all weekend, and we're like if you couldn't deal with a rut, it was like it was on to you to change your line. Now, now they do quite a lot of work to to the track, but it does make it better for the racing. Um, 
because some of the ruts were so sharp and they were really narrow. So you'd just be getting cross rutted either way if you were not perfectly straight. And um, it was a real hard track to like to get through, even just on practice day, like because it got kind of dry in the afternoon, but it was still so slick everywhere. And you saw Armory and Loic, and and probably like I don't know, fifty to seventy percent of the riders have quite solid crashes because. You could push, but then you just hit a root, and you couldn't even really see it because there's so much dappled light. Um, when it was sunny, around certain times of the day, there'd be like you go from full light to full dark, and that top section where you enter the woods, and it's like maybe 55, 60 k's an hour into the woods, and then you can't see anything. And then there was quite a lot of sections of track like that, so. You couldn't read it very easily, and then you're hitting a route, and then you eat shit like pretty big crashes from not really a mistake, just like you can't see the line and you didn't see that route. So you had to be really particular and like think the track walk and the course, or like the um, teams having people on track really would have helped this week, and and that those people could have helped massively in the final if they had contact with their riders whilst watching the live stream. Like some, some riders sh- probably should have adjusted their lines a little bit more for that wet race, but um, they tried to go for it a bit in that bottom section. And I think that really cost a lot of um, runs that were going well, you know? Yeah, I think that's well said. And that's interesting you bring that up about course maintenance because I was chatting to Bren. We watched the race when we had Mega. And one question I had, and it's interesting to hear that they did do some work because I said to him, are we not in a place where, like in motocross, if there's bad weather, they prep the track for safety and for good racing and they prep the first turn? Like that's part of motocross or supercross, yeah. you know, depending on the heats and stuff, they do work on the track. Say it gets dangerous, say all these things. So we're not at the point. It, obviously, they couldn't do the whole track. But if you know it's going to rain like it did uh, and you go up and you go, okay, let's find the slickest most terrible clay sections and let's dig them up yeah. you know like you yeah. said let's dig a few ruts because now it's just unpredictable it's not about skill it's not about going slow it's literally there's only one way to go there's only one speed and like you said okay whether you saw the route or not if there's no other line that's where you got to go and then it's luck of the draw you know so yeah. i'm at the point that i'm saying i would i would rather have a fairer race like try and dig up that steep section at the bottom yeah. before the guys go up tell everyone like it's only going to be better it's like, we haven't changed the course <laughs> yeah. for the worse it's only going to be safer the racing is going to be better i'm at that point what do you think about that yeah i would agree maybe but i kind of like that it would you would practice it before but if you dug it up quite a bit it would get really soft as well so it would have been hard to dig anything in that rain yeah um, fair enough and then like so you'd have to do it before the event but um i spoke with rory briefly and he said the original layout of that bottom chute that was taking everyone out, they wanted to go straight down and then straight into that big boom that, that people was like where Valley slid out and a lot of Bernie as well, like a lot of riders slid out on the big boom before the, the jump out into the open, the Reese Wilson jump. Um, so they wanted to go straight down and not have that other turn. If they'd have done that, everyone <laughs> would have got everyone would have gone straight off the berm like there would be no way to slow down like because it's just play yeah so they did put that other berm back in that that was the old line but they rebuilt the whole berm so the berm was actually pretty during the practice and semi-final day like it was insane that berm was like real steep so you could you could hook it and they took they were digging the ruts out of that one every time as well each day so it was a good line that they had to do that rather than going what the original line was fought by the uh, local organizer um and then they did put that low line what greg rode the wide line that that greg rode with his feet out and then got back to the berm like and maybe like 40 percent of people rode that line but they did put that in in case it got wet and i think that was still the line to ride if you wanted to get down that section safely unless you're a uh, Remy Turion or someone like that. 
Yeah, so that's interesting that they put lines like that. And I think that's really cool that they're willing to adjust on the fly or they, they had a dry line and then maybe everyone gave feedback and said, well, that's not going to be safe or if it rains, which it looks like the mm. forecasts are showing that. So that's that's really cool to hear. But yeah, Leger is just historically one of the most challenging tracks to get right. And as you said, with the ruts, with it being dry, then going to wet, it takes a lot of rain, a lot of bikes to to get down so i mean that is a topic of the race is the conditions yes. they were yep. treacherous and and, uh, and probably changed a little bit as well as the race went on they yeah they, they they changed the whole way through the women's race and then in the into the men's race as well like if you look at how muddy certain riders were some people were really muddy and then others like greg was pretty clean in comparison like not saying you rode down an easy track though. No, like, no, I know you're not. Maybe, maybe a lot worse in certain sections, but then other sections might have been better. So it's like such a way up of conditions. Yeah, I mean, we could literally take a minute to talk about this race, or three hours to go back and forth <laughs> on who had the most optimum conditions, or what would you rather <laughs> pick. And I'm not taking. I'd never sit here and take away from anyone that got down the hill. We can only speak to. <laughs> The conditions were different as they developed through the ladies and then the men as well. You looked at conditions, you looked at sometimes there was a little bit of dust sitting under the clay and then yep. later on there were rivers running down the track. And then in between yep. that is probably the worst conditions. You know, Greg had no information. He he, yeah, he, he just just the woman's race. Yeah, so he had he the had, women's which race. Is, Probably the worst information. Like, yeah. Would you really I, I want would, to watch the women's race? Two people I made it down. I would watch it myself. Like, if I was racing, I would watch it just because you see the track. So it's like track information, but you can't necessarily take from the riding, you know? Like, I was going to say, would you not yeah. be more, cons would you not ride subconsciously more conservative after watching eight people crash? I would say, um, Greg, probably f that was him riding conservative, but trying to go fast like he had his foot out everywhere so he he said he just wanted to keep s speed out of the corners but he didn't want to slide so like he didn't want to slide out so he just have his foot out and then he's ready for a dab and probably that would be like slightly conservative like you don't often take your foot out well he doesn't uh, no, if, no, if greg's no. foot out is uh, it's either a mistake offline yep. or as you say conservative so when he dropped in and, and I saw the speed he was carrying, I, I really, it just made me think of some of the amazing, you know, he has done historically very well in, in wet, muddy conditions. He <laughs> really has got incredible balance and sort of touch on the bike in those conditions. Um, we've seen it a lot, especially for a tall rider, you would argue you'd want a little lower center of gravity. So he definitely had some odd conditions. He probably had some <laughs> places were better and some places worse, uh, maybe carried better speed in some places, but it would have been so icy in other places, you know, yeah. and not knowing where to go. You know, when there's a river yeah. running around the track, you just aim for the river and there is some yeah. grip normally at the bottom of that. And also um, when you've had like even five or 10 riders that, that are in your category, it cuts in one like quite good line. Like then you know, you can generally see where everyone was sliding. In the women's race, they were all sliding. So he he drops in after probably 10 minutes after they've finished that race. And it's been raining, so it's just polished. You don't have, like, clear, good lines. And where there is marks on the track, it's probably people sliding off the bike. So you're not, like, you can't take anything from what you can see. And I, like, personally, I like to be able to see the marks on the track so you're, like, that's like the race line, you know, like often that gets better with a few riders, the race line, and then and then maybe worse after. But I like to have like a track that's been ridden a bit. I hate to be the first run on a polished track. No, but it's, then it's horrible. Yeah. I, I feel like I would rather drop in last, I guess, just yeah. sitting yeah. here listening to you. I guess I'd rather just be in the piss wet rivers, just like, oh, well. This is going to be fun you, regardless. You know, I've got no other choice with Greg. It's like, how hard do I push? Yeah. Like, there's not much information for your eyes to see ahead. Okay, there's someone slid out. Okay, I'm going to miss yeah. that. Okay, there the river is. So, 
I mean, yeah, just the experience of that guy really paid off. You know, could you imagine? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's not even consciously strategy. It's just so much subconscious experience and talent just sitting in there in that start gate. Mm -hmm. Gets the information from his team, which is now yeah. happening more than ever. Right, riders watching yeah. the live feed atop the race. That would never happen before. You don't want nah, extra, no you don't want input coming in before you run. But yeah. now you listening to Amory talk to Remy about what lines they might do and are they going to be conservative? Clearly, everyone got radioed up about that steep section. Like you cannot go high there unless you Remy too. Yeah. And apparently, he told Amory he's going to be conservative there. So that's his conservative line. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, because well, because <laughs> non-conservative for him would have been to go uh, enter high on that drop and then stay high. He yeah. entered high, went wide. So it's like he's like I oh, am yeah, conservative. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you're a psycho yeah you and he's like yeah it's yeah. something else it's yeah totally no, yes. different and credit to yeah. him he was fast all week it's not like okay it rained it became remy terron conditions like leger yeah. when remy's really up there then you know the tracks as it should be you know remy's an incredible yeah. rider on all tracks but he has shown us he excels when it's steep when it's gnarly you know like an andorra the the old track and leger before so I mean, everyone loves seeing Remy ride, and everyone loves seeing him doing well. So that that really was cool. So, um, but on on Manor, I mean, that saves the season, you know, for all the work and effort and this off season change. They didn't have the luck, you know. It's it wasn't just like lack of speed or something, you know. He came in, seemed like on pace at Fort William, maybe trying too hard. Racing incident crashes twice, bums the shoulder out. I don't know how he does it, man. I did mega avalanche this past week. My body's tired. I mean, I'm not training like you guys, <laughs> but I was just thinking yeah. I'm definitely not recovering like I did when I was 23. So, yeah. yeah, to get through these race weeks and to recover from that shoulder, so good for them. You you want to see the hard work pay off, and and hopefully yeah. this is that sort of silver lining he was looking for to sort of drop the mic, uh, I don't know, at Worlds, end of the season. Yeah. Like, you've got to think this is... Now he can retire. Like, come on, what else are you yeah. searching for? Well, now he can go into the break and uh, he knows he's got a, like, confidence builder. Yeah. And the next race is World Champs. He lives in Andorra, so he's probably going to pre pro pretty well for that. Um, at least then he knows it's doable to do a good result at World Champs and hopefully he can he can do that. Um, I think they, they did really well to... He, well, he did really well just to get to the final. He just like oh yeah, first. we forgot to say that, like yeah. the, there's a there's a story where he's not even in the final, and that's the, yeah, that's yeah. back to and our thing. Like, what do you mean we want more in the final? Because imagine Greg is thirty first. He doesn't yeah. race the final. He doesn't have a podium. The story never and it existed. Means nothing. Yeah. And oh he was, man. He's that close to being thirty first. Like he probably point three or what was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, maybe even less. It's probably like. <laughs> A touch of the break and he's not in the final but like he made the final so hats off to him and then he used all the wisdom of 20 odd 25 odd years of racing to know how to race a track like it in those conditions and then his team played it really well as well with milway phoning him up and saying go low in the bottom shoot go low he says that before he's even seen anyone he just watched the women's race so he had to kind of put his ass on the line a little yes. bit because imagine he went low and just went straight off the track then it'll be his fault yeah no one was riding it that well so you could no. see it was like super slippery there as you dropped yep. in low you know the way i'm yep. re rode it was ridiculous but more people had gone Good. down there and maybe moved some dirt so yeah you're right alan yep. putting his ass on the line greg i think he went with intermediates i don't think he went full spikes because nothing yeah. really would have worked well so intermediate Decent yeah. choice there versus Amory had to go. Well, Amory, did you check his bike? I couldn't quite see I if there were yeah, cut spikes full, or full, full spikes. Spike. Was it full, full even spike. in the yeah, middle? Yeah, yeah. and and Tyrion was on full spike. I think, I don't know if it was the front or the back, but he ran a, a full spike even in the dry. So I don't know what planet he's living on, but he was taking different lines to everyone all week. Like, yeah. totally different. So he was almost riding a different track and the way he was riding it as well but then he was running i don't know how you could run a full spike when it was dry so many routes you'd have to be such a light precise rider i would just crash but um, yeah but i think he's on wet screams and that like full spike is quite moldable hey you know like yeah. it's not great in the hard pack which I, I'd, yeah. I'd rather ride it on a route than a hard pack because they yeah 
they more like flexible than the Dirty Dan that um, Amri wrote. So like I think Amri's yeah. tire in the main in the yeah. rain is better. Not often that you see anyone with full spikes on. No, that's the problem with the tracks these yeah. days. They're not fresh enough. You know, we, yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost yeah. sad. So it's cool to see yeah. that full spikes were needed. And then, I mean, we're on the setup. Uh, he ran full mud guard. You know, it's quite aggressive yeah. for this day and age, that mud guard. Um, and he yeah. carrying more speed, uh, maybe just didn't feel like taking tear offs um, versus someone like Dak. That, that was yeah. talk of the town, taking a lot more tear offs. Um, but Amri took one or two maybe yeah. so Dak, Dak had a problem with his goggles so, is that um, what it was he had, there's a vent in his helmet and it dripped into the top of the goggle yeah and he was on tear offs not roll offs or uh roll offs but it dripped into the in between the lens so oh. then it went through the foam and then it was just dripping in oh no the whole, so he was tr- he thought that was going to get in vision but it just never did it, it wasn't doing anything it was I just fogging so. it up well yeah. Let and then he had to just keep pulling it because you're like, oh, please get some vision. Yeah. And he couldn't see anything. He had no depth, depth perception. Like you saw in the top section, he just went nearly straight off the corner. Yeah. And he was one of the few riders that did that. Either he's hanging it out or he couldn't see. So it's like, you imagine riding that track when you can't see. He, <laughs> he did pretty well to even make it down, you know? Like, well, I was going to say without that, it's not really historically his conditions where he might excel no. as much as the dry. Yeah. And I, and I think this is a story of two races. Like it, it, it's so tough for him like, to stomach this result. Yep. If you're winning quality, you're winning semi. Even if it's dry and he gets third, it's going to be a tough yep. thing to stomach. You know, it's a perfect weekend so far. But, I mean, wow. He, he really outshone the guys in the dry or, or changing yep. conditions too dry. That's incredible, man, just showing that, that sheer speed. And then to get ninth then on conditions which didn't really favor you, the run didn't look that great. And he had yeah. a problem with uh, vision. That's insane. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Salvaging a lot of points. He moves up to fifth in the overall. Yeah. Yeah. It could have gone a lot worse for him then. Yeah, I would probably crash if I couldn't see. Cause, or you just get frustrated and then you, you're you frustrated with your goggles. So you stop thinking about your riding. I wonder, I wonder if he... If you have to keep pulling yeah. them, like you're really annoyed. You'd, you'd, want know, to pull like, them, and, you'd want to pull them off, I guess, if yeah. you actually knew what the problem was. Yeah, but you you don't have you've got three minutes or four minutes to figure it out, so you don't really figure out the actual problem. No, and no. then then you're like, oh shit, that's what it was. Like, but goggle prep and that sort of thing is like, it's not often we we need to do it to that degree. So we don't of, often we race in the mud, but not like pouring rain, heavy rain. So you don't start where you can't see out of the start gate. That's pretty rare. So, um, yeah, that they probably work. He'll now learn from that and then be pretty prepared next time, I imagine, for a, a proper mud race. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's it's really tough to prepare for that. It doesn't matter how many Good. mud rainy races you've had. Yeah, you're yep. not often riding down in the pissing rain. You're often then taking a break because you're going to get cold. You could get sick. It's it's uh, treacherous to train in those conditions all the time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, did you randomly, like speaking of those conditions and someone like Benoit, did you come past him? Like maybe we expected more from him at home yeah. and after the crazy race. What was, what was the weekend like for him? I mean, before we get to some of the podium guys. Um, well, I, I don't, yeah, he must have been pretty disappointed, but, um, yeah, he did 15th in the semi final. So... It's not it's not near the win, but um, he's probably probably pretty gutted with how it all went, considering how it went last year. Uh, I didn't actually speak to him, so I don't know how he was feeling about it, but I can't imagine he'd be too stoked. Yeah, and I would have thought that those conditions maybe would have played better for him, you know, because he rides Mozine in the wet and it doesn't dry like. Morsing's been muddy for a while, but then it's muddy and soft. And it's there, it was like the hardest conditions to adapt to is when it rains right before the race and you've done a whole dry week like that. Well, and on the just, on the hard pack, you're not going to go out yeah. and train much in those conditions because you're just risking nah. crashing. It's, it's not. <laughs> yeah. So people yeah. might hear, well, why wouldn't guys get used to these conditions? Like 
it's certainly yeah, yeah. something to look into and do, but I think we've all been out there where we've gone up to train or we've gone to Morzine and it's it's treacherous. So you risk yeah. a crash, you can break a wrist, fracture something. It's not worth it in the end, you know? No, for sure. Um, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to go and ride that track in those conditions, but to race it, it you know there's a big opportunity. So yeah, it normally probably helps the underdogs a little bit more than the favorites. And Benoit would have been the favorite, so then maybe just from last year he would be the favorite. But yeah. then that that pressure, those conditions, just and probably not his week. I don't know. A few people have had sicknesses and colds, so he could have been run down as well. And then it's pretty hard. Also, when you target a race, like if you've done so well at a race the last year, it doesn't make it easier the next year. It probably makes it harder. Definitely. You come no, in, absolutely. Like, yeah expectations almost like the enemy oh dude expectations are the root evil of unhappiness you know and 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 for and performance as well it's certainly tough so yeah i just want to give them you know like there are guys not quite having the season they want but someone that's bounced back is andy cole that was insane i guess for me i forget the order of events i don't know if that was before or after finn but that attacking run to me, was well, someone that you're like, okay, if someone can ride it like that, commitment. Yep. So the tough thing is to commit. Once you commit, it's actually then easier in a lot of sections because you're carrying more speed. There's actually yep. more grip. So uh, it's such a catch-22, you know. Someone like Amory is making certain sections look easier, but they are easier because he's carrying more speed. But that's because yep. he's willing to crash and he's committed. So it's like mm. it's this domino effect. And when yeah. it keeps going, the domino is like falling in the right way. So Andy Kolb, you know, deserves a medal as well. That's a huge run. And, yeah. and if it's not for one of the greatest downhill runs in history, he wins the race. Yeah, and it's, it's and pretty it's the much... And it's the same thing for Dak at Val Sol. Yeah, you know, it's, it's Calvin like, Colby what? of Dak last week. Yeah, true. Calvin Colby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a, such a good run to watch. Because it's kind of like... He did that high line, like one of those shoots, he bombed down and then he just went full high. And that was like, that was 100% a dry line. Like, he's probably the only one that rode straight high out of the berm and got high to open the next turn. And it was, look, it was sick. Like, I was like, yo, this guy is on. Like, yeah. when you see that, it's like reminiscent of some Sam Hill stuff. You're like, you've got to have a lot of confidence to want to ride the high line still when it's that wet. Like, and then to make it, if you have to be so committed to make it actually work, and he was, so it was pretty impressive. I was like, what a ride. Like, stoked to see him back up there. Yeah, really impressive. And and those were the type of guys that were committed, were riding some sections faster than you thought possible, and then they back it off for the shoot. They, they clearly have the information from the team. Mm-hmm. They've been watching the live broadcast, and they were able yep. to really, really back it off. So that was in incredible to 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 see yeah and and props to him and then the other guys like someone like thomas is stuck another french on the podium i think they've french have won in leger the last five years or since it came back on the circuit so and it's a lot of pressure to perform um at a home race as you know you've raced in new zealand i've raced in south africa yeah. it's it's like you say you're, t- you're obviously going to target the race that brings yeah, all yeah. this yeah. you know there's way more distractions there's yeah. way more that you know that you've got to lose because uh, you should know the track more. It's home conditions. Like I'd rather go race the furthest way away from my home, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, yeah. that's just me. So yeah. yeah, awesome to see and those guys on the podium. Man, Thomas is there. Insane. Yeah, it's just so so cool. Remy as well. Amory. Yeah, just on the podium. He had this uh, piss pot on the podium because he lost his hat, or is it for safety for the crowd surfing? What's the deal? I, I don't know what his plan was, but... um, <laughs> I think it's for safety, I, for concussion was, protection. It was probably for his safety, yeah. <laughs> then I saw, then he um, took the helmet off and they carried him out his tent and he almost banged his head on his tent uh, door. And I was like, well, you yeah. should have kept the helmet on for that. But um, <laughs> no, credit, because Thomas is stuck, is just one of the gifted riders that we love seeing on the circuit, but he's not always mm-hmm. going to feature, right? But he yeah. has been on the podium. It's his second podium. Uh, yeah. And well deserved. You got to get down the hill to get on the damn podium. You know, you got to stay on the bike. Yeah. He said his last podium, Amory won as well, so he was pretty happy to repeat that. And um, it was just, it wasn't the one, two, three of 
the Leger World Champs, but it was kind of the similar story, you know, three three inches on the podium. They kind of owned that podium. And then they finished the podium and a stack grabbed the microphone because they don't do um they don't do any national anthems anymore. So a stack grabbed grabbed the microphone off the speaker and sang the national anthem with the crowd with Remy and Armory and it was just something else. It's like those moments are unreal and it's cool to see guys like Thomas get to live those, you know, like he's been kind of struggling, I would say a bit for how high his potential is. Yeah. Skill level. Yeah. Yeah. Like what he can do on track and then what he's been doing in the races doesn't match lately. And then he rode all week really good here in Leger. So to then do it in the wet, back it up and get a podium and then enjoy it with Remy and Namari, who have had a bunch of podiums, was pretty special to see. You know, like they, they were having a good time. And Kolb as well. Kolb was going mad with the crowd, you know. Like, yeah, and I Greg think, got on the crowd yeah. surf. Like they all did. Like, why wouldn't they all you? Did, yeah. You don't need a yeah. win to get on, have a crowd surf there. Like, why? Nah. Just spoil yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I think. Uh, the organisers in Warner Brothers Discovery were hoping that they could control the crowd after seeing how crazy it was last time. And then uh, I think they'd need an army to control the crowd. They did, didn't quite come prepared. Well, I saw uh, George from Crank Brothers, and shout out to Crank Brothers again for bringing you this, yeah. this podcast and supporting it, supporting Win. The most confident people on the hill were the eight gendarmes that thought they could uh, stop the crowd oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they literally were stopping anyone yeah. no last year was never going to happen yeah shame like i see why they're trying to stop it i mean i don't know what to say you you can't they just bash down the fence it's dangerous as well like yeah we're laughing we don't want anyone to get hurt like this could no. you could have a more sad story if someone gets a little bit more hurt yeah but um yeah they mostly just want to be pumped for the ride. They want to celebrate, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. celebrating in a good way and yeah, yeah, the crowd serving. But we have to get to the ladies for sure. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But maybe we have now segued to which could have just been a two minute podcast on Amory absolutely slaying the field again. We yeah. we thought we'd seen an outlier in Val de Sol. Yeah. We have another gnarly track. We have a rider with confidence, as we said earlier. We have the mm-hmm. conditions which, if you are willing to attack, and if it goes to plan, and other riders make mistakes, which a lot of them did, and you stay on, and you are that committed, you are going to smash the field. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it just it 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 just it? But again, it his his skill level, his commitment, his touch yeah. on the bike. He didn't put. It, oh well, that run wasn't even like perfect, perfect because he ran wide in a few sections, like you said, coming into the first wood after the road gap. He ran yeah. a little bit wide, but he just didn't get fussed, and he just got back to his inside, pushed again. Yeah, a few times I was like, he's not in the line he intended to be, but he just yeah. let it ran, got back to the river, feet up. He's just so planted on yeah. that bike, man. It's just unbelievable to watch. It. I don't. I don't know if he did, but I hardly saw a foot out at all. I mean, and, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, I don't think a foot came off. I don't think off. he dropped a foot, yeah. So he was probably clipped in the whole run, which is insane in those conditions. Like, when you watch everyone else's runs and then he just stays feet up everywhere and feet up down that last chute on that low line, which is probably like, you've never ridden, you'd never ride it, like, in the practice. Feet up down that low line and into the berm. It was like... And he stalled a little bit on the burn, but he it's, kept it, the balance. It, it almost could have gone the wrong way, yeah. When you're yeah. a little bit about to, like, you're like, I need to be turning Off. right now, but my yeah. bike's still pointing left. I mean, that can yeah. it can go wrong in a second there for him, even though he wasn't attacking yeah. too hard. Yeah, you're right. That was yeah. that was Grab pretty cool. Yeah, and then pedaled yeah. out. Yeah, and then he got it, you know, <laughs> he, a little yeah. late into that turn, almost throwing yeah. it away. And then yeah. he got it around. Yeah, it's incredible to see, man. Just the bike <laughs> handling. And then... Man, the patience coming into there. He was he really yeah. checked up coming in yeah. um, to where Finn yeah. Finn had a problem there and a few guys, mm-hmm. uh, maybe Remy Meyer Smith, one of the one of the, yeah. the brothers just came in there just a the bit hard. Yeah. yeah, out the front door. He was in a good run. There's so many notables. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, and and I was chatting to Brent. I was like, how how does this happen? But you know, what lines do you take? And he said. I said, when you were riding well back in Shumpery, you know, those Danny Hart days, yeah. and, and Brendan's done some really good wet runs. Like, 
is there yep. any thought or is it just subconscious? And he said, it's subconscious. It's, I think you feel out the first two, three turns for grip and yep. then you just let it go and your subconscious and talent must take over because you are just yep. reacting. It just has to be a react. You, you can't be fussed if you miss a rut. You can't be fussed if you're not on the line you want to be. You need, you need to hold that, hold that speed and that flow, you know, not over break um, and just keep the momentum up because if you're jabby on the brakes, you lose traction as well. Yeah, you got to be so smooth on the brakes. Yeah, and but he's going that fast, so to be smooth on the brakes is pretty hard to keep to come into some of those sections quite fast and then brake smoothly is a challenge. Um, but the run was pretty much flawless for those conditions. Like, what could you do better? You know, like in those conditions, insane. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. I mean, yeah, we could speak for hours about it. And like we said for a second, it's just like mic drop. That was yeah. insane again, you know, just, I mean, reminisce of when he won those four races. What was that season? Did he do four in a trot or four in a season? Yeah, three or four. I don't remember the exact, but he was on a roll. Well, and they, he's back on that. Yeah, yeah it's, like it's back. There's three yeah. more. <clears throat> Excuse me, when I got mega yeah. altitude cough. Um <laughs> Yeah, we've got three more big races, two World Cups, yeah. so it's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the conditions, pro well, I think hopefully be a bit more consistent at the other ones. And um, yeah, you know, someone like Loic, you can chalk it up to a championship ride. It probably doesn't feel yeah. good with the seconds he's put in, but it's it's not. He didn't go for the win. Um, no. the conditions helped Amri, you know, put in these yeah. gaps as well and the talent. So um. I don't know if you lose too much confidence. It seems like that was the plan Loic wanted to do, and he executed. And he seemed very happy at the finish line after yeah. his run, right? Yeah, yeah. I think just to make it down, he's got to be stoked, you know. Like, um, and then he saw Finn Finn win for it. Finn could have done second or third, and he went down in flames. But he he said he Finn said he went to that rut. He, it was just a puddle, so. He, and he was doubling out of that. And that was, to me, that was a dry line. I wouldn't try it in the wet. But when you're that committed, I guess you you want to do it. So um, I don't think anyone else tried to double out of that. And then he said it was just a puddle. And then there was a route underneath, but he couldn't see it. So he couldn't place himself correctly in the rut. He just had to hope for the best. Yeah. And then he said, took off his, oh, shit. Here we go. Yeah, from and my side, that, he was, was a little, little late. Like he... In the dry, yep. I think he would have wanted to land further right as left. Yeah, and yep. land, he just, you know, ex exactly as you take off with no vision or the puddle, he's he's like, oh, yep. that's not the line I'm meant to be landing on. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, hindsight's easy. Sitting on the couch for me is easy to say, oh, why <laughs> did you, why did you gap that? But that was his commitment to his run is is to attack, yep. and that's how he attacks. So yeah, yeah, it was a great great run. Otherwise, considering, and then I don't know who other notable runs we had probably Ethan was on a really good run at he was until, yeah he was and the yeah. the the mental sort of composure to come into a start or to be stuck in the start gate with a course hold yeah that's i don't horrible. think people at home understand how much sort of well experience would help and composure yeah. it takes to be able to then throw down a good run after that and um there's no way to hide there. You can't go back to yep. uh, where you're warming up to kind of reset. So, you know, you often get into your process a couple of minutes out. And normally with a yep. course hold, you go back to where you are, the mechanic, you maybe get back on the spin bike and then you do mm -hmm. the last five, 10 minutes again. Cause they'll say, cool, we're five, 10 minutes out. He was yeah. just stuck in the start gate. Um, yeah. And he had a good For week. Quite a while. Yeah. A lo yeah. long time. So he had a good week, yeah. you know, he's really yeah. on pace. I think that is definitely a notable. There are many notables yep. that had good runs. But I think someone like Dylan Maples, who had an incredible quality, right. to me, that's a notable. Yeah. yeah, that's he just got done by the semi-final. Like if that that's another great reason to get rid of semi-finals. Like you lost a rider that was on form on that track and would have made the race maybe not exciting in the wet conditions, but he had the track speed to to do a podium. So impressive to see his progression. Like yeah, from from a rider that was a privateer, picked up by the team last year, 
and then now he's he can battle with the for the podium. It's insane. Yeah, it's a big notable. And um, yeah, like I said, I was a, I was a little stuck trying to uh, come out of retirement and then race like this uh, insane, stupid mega avalanche race. So I didn't <laughs> quite get caught up on why we didn't see Danny Hart because people be like, we need to see Danny Hart in those right. conditions because that is the type of run we've seen out of Danny Hart in those conditions, yeah. throwing caution to the wind, and that's what Amory did. Rivers running down the track. Do you have more mm. intel on that? Was it just a bad semi? Well, he, just, he just put an Instagram post that it wasn't what he expected, and he doesn't tend to go well in Leger. Um, mm. So it's surprising, really, because he's been putting in the work. I would have thought that the semi should be on, but there's such a tight margin to, to go to that final is way harder than a lot of people will realize. I think when you're watching from outside, you don't realize what those margins are now. And you do like just a little bit of couple of mistakes, lose the rhythm of your run, you're not going to the final. So even if you are a rider that could go on the podium like Danny and yes. Greg, like Greg was so tight from not going to the final, then he goes to the podium. So it shows... It's a good the level of good, the riders we have. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point because you go 30, you're like, oh, the race winner has to come from the top 30. But as we've said, you've got to get the correct 30 on the correct course and the correct conditions. And sometimes with the yep. semi, like a Dylan Maples, you lose him. And then now Danny, maybe historically, summer hasn't done well at Leger, which is surprising in its own right. Like saying that is odd. Yep. I, I like the track for him. Something quite yep. doesn't gel. So maybe when he mm -hmm. gets there or a rider gets to a track he hasn't done well at before, that's tough to switch that around. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'd rather go to a track that you've done well at because there's less doubt. Oh. You just like get into it. Yeah, there's expectations, but it's just an easier week if you've done well there before. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked it because this year was probably like the most technical. Leger has been like, yeah, in the past it's been dry and so on, but then it's just really fast. And this time it was really technical and the ruts were really like, you had to be styled on your riding over the routes and the ruts and just really like precise and if you weren't uh you'd be offline or off balance and cross rutted rear straight away and then you get stood up in the corners and you just lose so much time and i thought that would be like danny's jam like there was one section in practice where it was sketchy over like it was a sketchy upper rise and then down to root and last year they were like gapping this step down out of it uh stacking another guy and the rut was so sketchy that you had to like get up high over these roots and Danny was doubling into that in practice and I'm like, Whoa, he's on. So he must have had like a mistake and then it kinda of snowballs, you know? Yeah, it shows you how tight the margins yeah. are, man. It's insane. Yeah. So <laughs> we might remember some more notables. There always are. Let us know in the comments. Um you guys are watching um probably as passionate as we are. Then the women. I mean, they had the worst yeah. of it. They had the worst yeah. of it. They never got the river running down the trail, and they never they didn't have any intel. They didn't no. get they didn't get radioed up and said don't go the high line down the chute. Yeah. So <laughs> that is horrible. Yeah, insane. And then they the first one is uh, Ali. Oh, she's like second rider to drop or third rider to drop. She qualified uh, semi final eight. So then she probably never in her wildest dreams expected to be walking away with the win. No, there's no and ways. Then, uh, she would have been coming to this race and she's like, she's had quite a tough season. Like hasn't been going well by any means for her compared to other seasons where she's had like quite a few, generally has a few podiums each year. So like, and she's been struggling a bit and it's same with the men's, the level to get through to the semifinal is really hard because then you go to the 10 riders, to the final um and then she just would have not had that expectation so it's probably the best way to line up to a wet race like that like i'll do what i can and then she got down you know she rode clean and that that's all she had to do look at her splits they were all pretty good i think yeah but i wouldn't i wouldn't take yeah. away with how good the run was because some people oh, might was, say, okay, so perfect, two yeah. so two ladies didn't crash, yeah. her being one of them. Yeah. It was the cleanest run, but it was also yeah. one of the most attacking clinical runs in those yeah. conditions. And, and like getting really over impressive. the roots nicely. Yeah, yeah she, she was, was light, light, light over the roots and just like attacking it the whole way. And she was holding. Um, yeah. 
she she probably didn't get scared by the rain. Because as soon as those hesitations come, if you touch a bit more brake, you're crashing. Like you you can't not, or you just use all your energy you're offline, and then then you can't get back in your own. Yeah. So and hats off to her. Like her first win, she's been at it for ten years. Those are the stories that I love to see from a, a wet race. Like that's what makes it. You know, like a wet race, it's an opportunity for everyone. Suddenly, like you can be just making that set uh, final. But suddenly you can win, you know? And yeah. that's the best stories to take away from a mud race, I think. Yeah, I wonder if she yeah. deep down believes she could win one after 10 seasons and she has had multiple podiums. Yeah. And then now coming back from injuries and it's, as you said, it's been an horrendous season to her standards probably. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> she comes out with a win. I mean, that's so cool. And, and, yeah. and it just shows you never to give up, you know? Yeah. And, and the sport will knock you down probably more than it lifts you up. But when it lifts yep. you up, it can lift you up really high. So that's that little carrot yeah. that gets dangled for all these athletes. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's just so special. What a cool story. And Millie with her best result, not the mm-hmm. cleanest run. She stayed up, but no. she looked really good. And she's historically done well in Leger. She historically does yeah. well when it's steep and, and technical as well. And hopefully she can build that confidence. Okay, I'm back on the podium and take it to a track where maybe she doesn't normally excel. Would be yeah. would be really cool. But look, we have to, excuse me. <laughs> oh man getting old in altitude is not good for me um yeah, yeah unfortunately eight other ladies crashed it, it, the the conditions yeah. were that treacherous and sort of unpredictable in that last shoot i mean like marine cabaret's crashed it's horrific i'm glad she's okay yeah, yeah and like she was just trying to get down she wasn't trying to push yeah. didn't do anything silly didn't no. have the information like, hey, back it off, go low. <laughs> just, yeah, well, you know, it's survival yeah. down here. We, no one knew. They were like the test dummies, for lack yeah, of a better like, term. They were literally the test dummies. That's horrible. Yeah. yeah, the worst case scenario. Like, you've got no one's runs to watch beforehand. You've got no information from your track crew because it just started raining before they even started. Like, it literally, I don't know, 20 minutes before maybe it just started raining. So was it? Yeah. What was the, the timing? When was it? Only uh, uh, twenty minutes before the finals, of the ladies. Maybe slightly more. It wasn't much. Though. So there wasn't like, a it, drop of water on last practice run. Last practice was insanely perfect. Like, oh, it's like why even go up? <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't like. I don't know. You want to get the feeling on your bike, but no, then of that doesn't quite help as well. It wouldn't help, like. Uh, because you you get this like feeling of going really fast and being aggressive, like so that that doesn't cross over to a wet wet run like that. Yeah. And then they had to just ride down and try and ride the lines that they thought's best, and and you don't know how slippery that last thing is going to be, because it's it's all clay, but you you're coming in there blind, you know, like you don't know what you're going for. It's almost more of an enduro approach at that that point because you're like. It's a different track. Yeah, I think yeah. you you would know you've you've raced both. I I, I yeah. do think it is more of an enduro, like try to figure out as you go, and yeah, the conditions could change throughout a couple of hours of enduro as well. It's it's a hundred percent a lottery, such a lottery. <laughs> you, you, know, sure. you, yeah. you you say okay, let's feel out the conditions in the first few turns. <laughs> that shoot. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> and even, it's right at the bottom even too, if so the you've fir- done all the work. Yeah, even if the first turn was super slippery, you're like, well, this is horrendous. Let me get down yeah. and get to the shoot. It's a lottery. It was a roll of the dice. Absolute yeah. roll of the dice. And probably one of, one of the most frustrating ones to go down is is Tani. Yeah, she's, that was a great, great that run. Was, that run, no surprise. She mm-hmm. grew up there in the region. Yep. You know how many runs she's done in the wet. She was out there riding again. She's obviously moved back to Wales, but she was out mm-hmm. there riding for two weeks leading into it, coming off yep. the confidence of, of winning a race in also tough conditions. Mm-hmm. And you could see that was commitment. That was someone yeah. that knows maybe where the grip is. And then, geez, that's all she wrote down the last shoot. So she's got to be frustrated but take so much confidence from this. Yeah. Yeah, you have to... You you have to be slightly annoyed, but then also stoked. Um, she was she was happy when I spoke to her for the interview. She still got third, so like, it's a good podium, you know. Like, you when you know you were riding so well, 
then a third is you got to be pretty happy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it, yeah, still being in third is definitely like that's a little bit of a silver lining for going down even with such fast splits. So yeah, you leave here yeah. pretty happy if you got six, seven, maybe yeah. more of a bit better pull. Uh, Miriam was good as yep. well, like up until especially you know in quali semi and she had little stitches on her hand, but yeah. she seems to be really g getting back to her old self, like looking good on the bike, talking with yes. confidence, those sort of things, you know. Uh, it's good to see, and like she got stitched up on the side of the track so that she could, she knew that she could go and do her qualifier or whatever. So like, <laughs> props to her, and and also props to the medical team who actually yeah have, on the side of the track, have, hey, just they have the anaesthetic and everything. Did they put a little <laughs> injection in? There? Oh, they had yeah, to. They did a stitch. Yeah, they did everything on the side of the track. I'm like, that's not very common, and I've not seen that at many races. No. But, yeah. Yeah. So. Props to her, and then like dealing with it's just a little finger, but it still gets pretty annoying, and especially in a mud race, you're like, oh, I don't want to put it down. It's a little more in your mind, you know. Oh, absolutely, riding yeah. injured. Yeah, you know, they often say be beware the injured rider, but yeah, you know, depending where that cut is, yeah, you can definitely f yeah. you could feel it or it could affect grip strength, like all those sort of yeah. things are super super tough. And Valley still managed to get on the podium. She just got unstuck in that last. There's like not much you can do there. You can try nah. and break a little bit more. Yeah. Like you have to eventually commit to get through the turn. Well, it's really blind coming over that crest where this that little stump was. Yeah. And if you come over just slightly on the wrong angle, you, you're not lined up with the rut. So you don't see the rut till you've gone over the crest, but then it's too late. And you ideally want to just slot into the rut, especially in the wet. You have to slot into the rut. So you're slightly one or two degrees off you're you're gonna hit the right on angle or hit the corner on angle you slide you get you're done it's like not much of a real mistake and again like you can't do much at that point but um she she took it pretty well actually she was like she really celebrated the finish for ali so it was quite cool to see oh awesome. and, uh, it it showed how much valley has grown into being the racer in person she is now yeah because Two, even two or one, one or two years ago, she would have just been out of out of that finish area faster than they could cut the uh, timing chip off. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, maybe the conditions and expectations of how that run could have gone helped. Yeah. You know, if often she's been so lead favorite to win a race and then crashes yeah, yeah, yeah. near the end. Yeah, but I mean, still frustrating because she got a yeah. lot of the hard, well, all the hard work done. Yeah, it's sort of the last turn on the track then there's the straightaway yeah. which is so sketchy anyway like there's <laughs> off camber bits and then even the tar road you you're kind of going over the tar yeah. road straight that looks sketchy yeah. and then the yeah. last boom's not steep enough last and that's clay horrible yeah i was just yeah. like amory please don't crash in this last turn yeah yeah, yeah. but um no i was props to valley and she's controlling that overall pretty well tani said closer now so that's cool um i hope it, it becomes a nail biter, but I'm not sure. Like I think Valley and Loic are managing the overalls pretty well so far. So um, yeah, they are. They've yeah. Loic's got a few more than well, yeah, 234 yeah. off the top of my head <laughs> for Loic. Yeah. Valley's got yeah, also 200 and what is that? Also 220, well, 24, I think. Mm. Just looking at it, yeah, they're the same. Yeah, so it's yeah. very similar, but with. Yeah. With the uh, quali semi final, um, you have a perfect weekend. You can do some damage, man. If you yeah, reel yeah, off a hundred and fifty sure. yep. point difference, and you're going into last race, hundred point difference, and all the points mm -hmm. are in the final, man, yep. a lot can happen. It it really can. Yeah. So that that yeah. could be a challenge for Loic, but he's the ultimate professional with that, and that's yep. probably the this is probably the like kick in the ass he needs. Mm -hmm. um, to probably come out firing at, at Ludenville to not leave too much for for the last yeah. race. Um, yeah, I, I guess, wonder. I wonder how hard he will go for um, world the world champs. Yeah, like surely he he wants another rainbow jersey, but like and it's in Andorra, so they they've got Loic, Loris, Amory, Greg that live in Andorra. They're and they and they ride them. together sometimes, not always. Yeah. But I saw on the Instagrams they go yeah, and do some laps together. together. Yeah. Like that's yeah. interesting. I yeah. don't think they're going to be riding much the next week or two or the next month. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all going to want to win that race. So, because could you imagine? That, be, yeah. That's going to be. 
no ways. He's no ways. He's backing off, man. Hey, no, nah, he overall, won't back off. He won't back off. He's got like, the overall last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, good point. We've got worlds coming up. Maybe yeah, that's amazing. So yeah. we've got, um, and it's a big break too. So it probably doesn't. It's not the best. Like for Amory, I think. Yes, you'd want to go. You want to go straight yeah. there with as Amory, right? Yeah. Although, you want to race next week? Yes. What about the energy? You've seen guys win. No, it's normally after Worlds you don't want to go to another race. Like, Loic struggles yeah, 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 yeah. after Worlds. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, Amri would just be pumped. He'd literally wake up with a hangover and say, let's go, let's race Worlds yeah. now. Like, he's Superman. Yeah. You know, you would feel, I, I like, you would feel like Superman. Yeah. Hey? yeah. I like how he celebrates properly, you know. Yeah, good he for goes him, up. Yeah. Oh, man, I he saw had some. He his tooth painted and he's having a good time. As and like... he was in a French like, soccer suit or, well, I don't know Yeah, what he's it just is. going... Going bad. Yeah, we obviously appreciate that. each to their own. You celebrate how you want, but I definitely yeah. enjoy a guy that's willing to work hard, and he just mm -hmm. like he lives for winning races, right? It's it's yeah. really is in his being, which is going to be tough one day yeah. when it slows down or he, he you know doesn't win all the races <laughs> yeah. like this. You, you know, I don't think you're getting the drug that gives you that. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> nothing. It, well, how do you not, know? Not that he's, how do you not know? that he's going to take drugs, but um. Nothing's going to replace that. Like, that's such a high. And and how he's riding as well. How he's riding, then the amount of work he did to come back, those those last two wins, insane. The, like, did you... Um, props to the guy. Have you heard Sean Palmer's quote on that? No. He said, he's like, I'm going to butcher it, but he, he basically said that. He said, there's, you know, all those yacht-owning billionaires and the drugs you take and you... There's no better feeling in the world than winning and saying you're the best in the world. And then he was like, there's no drug. And he's like, and I've tried some of them drugs. You know, he just said, he was like, and I would yeah. know on both sides which feeling is better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've uh -huh. totally butchered and respect to Palmer. But, there, yeah. I mean, there probably isn't much better feeling in the nah, world. Nothing, to know you've yeah. gone out and earned it and absolutely walloped everyone out there, you know. Um, yeah. But like you say, this is fuel in 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 the fire for Loic. Yeah, for sure. And Greg as well. It's like just a bit of confidence he needed. Whether there's question marks or conditions yeah. that he snuck through the final, who cares? Like he yeah. just needs that. Like, oh my goodness, there's still light at this end of this tunnel, and I'm going to Andorra yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, he's probably excited, Greg. I think this this has played in Greg's favor as well as it could have. And, yeah, uh, he's played the cards as well as he could have. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, champs, I, I, I Greg on the podium. I wouldn't bet against it. I haven't played poker yeah. with Greg, but I reckon he'd be a sneaky good poker player if we taught him the rules. You know, like he's yeah, sneaky yeah. mentally. Like yeah. he's always trying to get in people's heads, and uh, <laughs> he can definitely bluff. Like he can. He was basically bluffing through the season. You know, like trying to just yeah, yeah, get yeah. in the final with not good cards. You know, and all that. <laughs> so that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and then the yeah. ladies. I mean, I think Valley would still be our favorite, you know, like normal yep. conditions at, at, mm -hmm. at somewhere like that. But Tani is coming. So True, that's, yeah. That's it's, uh, sorry, no disrespect. Yeah. I shouldn't yeah. rule out. Maybe the the fire, yeah. for lack of a better term, yeah. use it again there, is properly lit for her. Yeah, yeah. she said she's not wanted to win this much for a long time, so she's stoked to be feeling like that again, which is pretty cool. That's um, impressive, right? Because yeah. it seemed like she was really grateful for coming back and dealing with all these injuries yeah, yeah. and like understanding her role in the sport for the next generation yeah. of ladies. But then you get that little taste of a podium mm. and then you get a little taste of a victory and then you're the fastest yeah. at the splits. You got to think, Hey, well I, I, I can take these world champ stripes. Why wouldn't you? Why are you there? Yeah, you're yeah. lining up in a race. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to get rid of everything. Yeah. Like, there's no other way. So, uh, it's cool. It's going to be, um, it's quite a long break now, which is unfortunate, but there's at least like crank works and so on, like a bunch of riders will do that. Yeah, it's at and the then end European of August. Yeah. yeah, end so it's of like August. A, it's not yeah. the, so there's the July break, but then there's basically the August break as well. Yeah, yeah. And you say, well, some people have their national champs or do they yeah, sometimes? Yeah, there's a couple of national champs and then there's um, European champs in Champery, which is world champs next year. So a lot of riders go there. Okay. And then 
Uh, Whistler Crankworx will be quite a big one. There's quite a lot of riders at that one. But what's the date of that? Do they have enough time to get back to Europe? Do you think more people will go this year? Uh, yeah, the more will go. They, a lot of like Ronan's going and coming back. So he's going to Crankworx, coming back, and then, yeah. Um, and coming back for European champs. So then... He he said he wants to race. Yeah, as much the as the, the youthful yeah. the youthful youth will do that for sure. Speaking yeah. of like that guy, man. Yeah. I mean, hindsight's a perfect science, but you would hope like just check the first turn next time, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just like rip the third turn, just check the first yeah, yeah, yeah. turn a bit. It was um, it was yeah. a shame, and he laughed at, but he did well though. He still got eighth with a bloody yeah, tuck over the bars. Yeah, to come back from that hard. There was yeah. a big crash too, like yeah. proper crash. Jump up and just go, and then ride really smart after yeah, that. Yeah, he rode. So, he rode um, really well. Yeah. So that was really awesome. And maybe we'll start wrapping up. There are probably a million notables and things we may have missed. Yeah. But you can hit us up in the in the comments. Otherwise, when? Yeah, you think it's been a, been another good World Cup, dude. Um, amazing, man. And yeah. and it 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 builds in the middle, and there's all these crash, and I'm thinking, ah. Oh. What's going on here? Well, cool. What's going to happen? And yeah. then the, the cream rises to the top at the end, you know, man, just delivering a show for us. Yeah. It, yeah, you can't ever think it's over till it's over. Like, same, the last two races have been almost carbon copy where someone comes down early, they're in the hot seat, you're like, oh, they're going to win it. Yeah. Like, Greg, you, we were thinking he's probably going to win it at some point, and then it, it just heats up and the best come down. They know what they know how to do it. So, no, no, that's they're... what makes downhill racing so awesome. It's the best sport. No, oh, it's amazing, man. Well, <laughs> um, I might have got a voice note from Sven when I check my phone again. So if I do, he was so eager to jump on the pod, but he's at a shoot. Um, yep. So I might drop the voice note in here and all the misspent some interviews, just so I don't have to do any yep. extra editing there, Win, but um. If that's all good, I might wrap it up, wouldn't unless you got any other nuggets for us. Uh, we've only got like just shout out to the Italian lad that uh, had a huge crash in his last practice run. Um, I put it on my Instagram. I was like, wow, this guy's not racing. He crashed in that berm where Valley crashed in the race in the wet. He just crashed there in the dry. So he was like, he's down hard. Oh, shame, man. And it cut his wrist right open. Um, it was down to the bone. So I ran down there. I'm like, oh, he's got a um, compound fracture and it, it was just a big gash oh horrible and then then he's like oh he had to get walked off to the medical and then he went to the hospital got the stitches he called his friend he's a privateer stefano and trozzi but he was he, in the um, final yeah in the final he's a privateer wow yeah, on a giant and um he called his friend and said get the bike ready i'm coming back i'm gonna race and <laughs> so then he got back grabbed the bike and went up the hill did his run and uh, he crashed in the same corner on the same wrist. <laughs> Huge shout out. Did he win the privateer award? Did you give it? Yeah, a, we gave him oh, the you had to. Summers one. Yeah. Oh, we wicked. Gave him the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They did it like a fundraiser with um, Satellite Coffee as well. And they have a donation jar with the free coffees every morning at the. Yeah, yeah. I remember from last store. year. Yeah, yeah. That pop up store from Wicked. The, yeah. Yeah, we gave him the cash from that because, like, mate, <laughs> what an effort. He'd come down, like, there's blood all over his. Um, wrist where it had been like the bandage was on and he, he just like I know what it feels like to be that guy like you're like yeah I've got a race I've done everything to be here and then he made the final so he would have been over the moon and then crash in the very last practice run right at the bottom and you're like oh it's over and then come back and rode this run got 26 with two crashes so he's, he's happy so, oh well that's what, a, what, that's amazing what a guy yeah. yeah, and props to him and props to you for doing the privateer and Miss Ben Summers. They do an awesome pop-up there. Check their yeah. website. They've really got good nuggets as the week yeah. progress. Well, dude, thanks so much to Win Masters. Always happy to jump on the podcast. Incredible insights. This was your Crank Brothers Race Review, where I am joined with some epic co-hosts, often from the race itself, either racing or doing the photos like Sven Martin. They are synonymous with Dano Racing celebrating 13 years in a row you heard in the pre-show winning that elite world champs title with a mallet dh pedal now i wonder who's going to win the worlds in andorra will it be someone on the pedal i am pretty sure it could be although there's one rider on a lot of form that might not be on the pedal so that's a bit of a tough one but they've been adding to the product offering 
bunch of podium contenders and race winners like Ronan Dunn, Lucas Shaw, Cami Belanche, Troy Brosnan, you name them, Benoit Coulanche, they're all in those shoes. So go check out what they've got. They do a lot of custom jobs as well, which look awesome. And if you're watching on YouTube, you're a legend. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, you're disappointing me. And you should be subscribed to Win Masters. Win TV does epic interviews after race and leading up. Check him out on Instagram. Till the next one, peace.